The goal of this video is to show how to create a 2D simulation of a ball rolling or sliding. We'll create the ball using a sphere. Then we'll attach three axes to it. One is a pin joint, which will uh, cause the ball to roll along the Y axis and two sliding joints, which will call the ball to translate along the X and Z axis. I'm going to modify the hello.xml file. If this file is open in the simulate app, then it shows a, a cube being dropped. And we rename that as ball. First of all, what we'll do is we'll change this type to sphere. Sphere has only one property, the radius is 0.1. Let's switch off gravity for now. Now I'm going to try to move this sphere on top of the plane. For that, I change this to 0 0.1, the radius. And now if I reload, and I see that the ball is in the plane surface. Now, when I try to make this ball roll or slide, it will be very difficult to distinguish the rolling ball because the color of the ball is uh, green. Similarly, the plane is fully red. And so it's very, very difficult to see if that the ball is moving along the plane or not. So in order to make that visually appealing and be able to see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the texture on the ball as well as that on the plane. So for that, what I do is if I go into Mujoko, I look at asset. There is a option to create textures. So I'm going to take these properties and I'll show you how to change the texture. So what we'll do here is we'll define a texture within asset. So I'll create the tag asset. Let me create the texture. So say texture. Name equals checks one. Because it's going to be checkered. I'm going to use a built in checker element, which is given here. checker and then the other ones are similar to that. So the other ones which I want to put here are as follows. Type equals 2D, which means it's generally suitable to show in plain elements using a 2D texture. Width equals 256, height equals 256. This is more or less related to the pixels. So more the number of pixels, the more finer the resolution. And then I specify RGB1 equals, uh, let's say 100, which is red, to RGB2 equals 010, which is uh, green. So what this does is basically it will use two types of colors to see the checks. There will be a red and there'll be a green. So how do you use this? Well, we have to create a material. We'll name it, say we'll put this on the uh, floor. We'll use this texture which we just created. It's called checks one, and then we'll put a couple of more things, which is text repeat equals five, which is just saying that we will repeat uh, in blocks of five by five, text uniform equals true. So the texture is uniform. 
And once we've defined it, we can now call this by going to plane and saying material equal to floor, which is this name. And I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need these colors. The colors are already been defined here. So now reload. You see that you have green and red. Now, if you want to change this to perhaps black and white, then you can just change this to one, one, zero, and then reload. So it's become black and white. Okay. Now, if you want to see what this text repeat does, we can just change it to two and two, and then you see that we get a small, fewer number of uh, checkers than we had with five comma five. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the sphere. I'll essentially copy this. Okay, and I'll just change a few things. I'll change this from the floor to say object. I'll call this checks two. So it'll be checks two. We can stick with the same text if it text uniform. The only thing we might want to change is the color. So let's change it from red to green. And then the last thing is to include it here. So I'll get rid of RGBA and say material equals object. Okay, now let's reload this. And then you see that this color for the ball. Okay, now we'll turn gravity on again. And reload. So this does nothing here because the ball is already underneath the floor. Now let's try to understand what the, let's try to understand what the axis look like. So for that, you know, to do that, what I'll do is I'll invoke RGBA again, and I'll change this to zero, 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 zero. Uh, this means that the first index indicates RGB colors and the last one indicates the, the opacity. Now I reload and the ball is still there. So I can just get like this for a moment and reload. The ball is gone. But if you open rendering and say joint, you see that the free joint. Now maybe I should just change it to point two so that you can see the sphere. So reload, you can barely see the sphere. Okay, now this is a free joint, which means that it allows motion in the X, Y, Z direction, as well as rotation in the X, Y, Z direction. To change that, I'm going to introduce uh, three joints as I told earlier. Let's introduce the sliding joint. Its axis will be one, zero, zero along the X axis. And now if you reload, you'll see that the axis point in the X direction. Similarly, we'll create another sliding joint along the Z axis, and then you'll reload. The axis are upwards. And then finally, we'll create a pin joint or a pin joint. And I'll say that the axis are along Y, so now if you see the axis this way. Now, what I want to what I want to happen is that if I have the axis the pointing the plus y direction, then a clockwise rotation would be positive, and I don't want that. I want counterclockwise rotation to be positive, so I can fix that by just changing this axis to be minus one, and then reload. And now you see that the axis point towards you, which means that if you curl your uh, if you hold your thumb of your right hand along this, the y-axis and then curl your fingers, that would be the direction in which the ball would rotate in the positive direction, and that is counterclockwise. So we are good with this. So let's switch back to material equals object, and then reload, and everything looks good. Now let's turn to, uh, before we turn to, um, um, uh, the Python code, let's try to increase the size of this plane. And so that can be easily done by just going in plane and specifying, let's say, uh, 100. 
And so if we reload now, this has it's going, it's going to go almost forever. Okay, now that we have got this, we are ready to take the next step, which is get the ball to spin. So I'm going to call this 2D ball. This is my template to Mujoko file. I'll open that. If you change this to ball.xml and just change the speed to the ending time to about two seconds and run this, then you just see that the ball is positioned. Now I want it to go in the forward direction. So what I do is let me go in the code just above init controller and say data dot q well which is the velocity in the x direction to be, let's say, four. Move on this. Yes, the ball just went away from you. If you don't want that to happen, if you want to follow the ball, then what you need to do is you need to go here in uh, and wherever it is MGV update scene. And here, just before the after all, it's just scam.look at should be data.q pose equals zero. Now you can see that the camera is moving with the ball. Okay, now I'm going to show you why exactly, uh, what exactly is going on with that XML. Now, here I have set this to be slight, slight hinge. And then a consequence of that was, uh, let's just make it five seconds, because that when I set the velocity to be four, you saw that it translate as well as rotates. Okay, that's because I put, give, give it, a slight degree of freedom along the x-axis and a rotate degree of freedom. For a second, let me comment this, okay? And now run this code. And now you see that the ball is just sliding and that's because it doesn't have that roll degree of freedom. And uh, what I'll do is I'll give this back and I can also set that speed, the speed in the, the rotation speed by invoking number two, which is the zeroth is slide, the first is slide along the Z, and the, the third one or the second one is the rotation. So let's make that 10. Okay, so it, it spins as, as expected, but let's give it a higher speed, let's say 50. So we can see it, it sort of tried to spin back and go to the left side, but then keep going forward. Let's change this to uh, 100. Now it came to a stop. So there's the spin increases, it counteracts the linear speed. Let's go 200. Now it's spun and started moving the other direction. This is an overspin and that's why uh, it started turning the other, turned the other direction till the speed in this direction went to zero and then went the other direction. So this is how you can create a 2D simulation of a ball by introducing three degrees of freedom 